Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique. Today we're going to be checking out Scalar 2 in a bit of detail. I'm going to be using it to create essentially a song starter. I'm going to be making some chords, some bass, some melody, and a few other little things all driven by Scalar 2. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm inside of Ableton Live and I've got a few things pre-made here. I've got a drum loop. I've got Scalar 2 on a track. I've got a sub or bass instrument on one MIDI channel and then a piano on another. And those are gonna come in handy in a little bit, but let's just go ahead and jump into it. The first thing I'm gonna do is take a preset chord progression. And I'm gonna jump into songs. I'm gonna come down here to future bass and just choose future bass one. Let's listen to what those sound like. To do that, I can click here or I can bind this to essentially my MIDI keyboard or the keyboard on my laptop, which is what I'm using. So right there, I was just pressing ASD on my keyboard and I'm getting those nice chords. So what I'm gonna do is take those first four chords and bring them into a pattern at the bottom. And if I go ahead and play that, That sounds really great. But what I wanna do is hit edit here and I'm gonna bring those up an octave. Now what I wanna do is actually I really dig the felt piano instrument that's internal to Scalar 2. So what I wanna do is inside of Ableton Live create a new audio track. And then where it says EXT in, I'm gonna go Scalar and then set it to in. And if I play this now, you can see that it's showing up there. So I wanna arm this track. And now what I need to do is hit record here. Now a good way to do this, once you kind of have an idea or you have a project going in your DAW is to set DAW host sync inside of Scalar 2. And to do that, you just right click right here. And now that this is grayed out and blinking, if I use my space bar or use the play cursor or play head rather in my DAW, Scalar will play in sync with it. All right, so that's much easier for me to sync things up and get things going. So now that that's done, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit record and record those four chords. Another thing is I'm gonna turn off loop here so I get the tail end so I can have it later if I need it. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So let's go ahead and hit record. Perfect, now I have it. Set that to auto and now I'll have that. So let's jump back into Scalar here. And let's bring these down to their initial positions and close out of there. So now let's have some bass line. Now to do that, I'm gonna be using a bass instrument. And I can route this inside of Ableton Live to have this trigger my bass channel, but that's not really what I'm looking for because I'm gonna be using this one instance of Scalar to build all kinds of different elements of this track. So what I'm gonna do is use the MIDI capture feature. I'm gonna hit MIDI capture here, and then I'm gonna play those same four chords and export that MIDI to my sub bass channel. Let's go ahead and do that. Hit stop, hit stop here on the capture MIDI. The drag is now available, so I'm just gonna click and drag that onto the sub bass channel. There we go. I'm gonna double click to open up that MIDI and a good place to start if you're not entirely sure. First of all, if I fold this down, any one of these notes is going to work in the key of our track. However, a good starting point, if you're not really sure what to use, is just use these bass notes at the bottom. So I could just highlight all of these, hit delete, and then I'll have my bass line, or at least the notes of my bass line. If I go ahead and solo this bass channel, All right, that sounds perfectly good. I can move that up and down an octave if it needs to be lower or higher in pitch. But what I wanna do is actually come back into Scalar and use one of the new features of Scalar 2, which is the rhythm. So if I turn on Perform here and come into where it says Accento, so I'm on Expressions here, but what I can do is come down to Rhythm, come into this one and just choose this one. And now if I play this, this is the rhythm I'll have. So it's a nicer rhythm. It's not just that straight one note. And if I do a MIDI capture again, mm -hmm. 
hit stop, click and drag and drop it in there. Now I'll have that rhythm and I can do the same thing I did before, which is just delete everything but the lowest note of the chord. And now if I play that bass line, and play that with the drums in those piano chords. Boom, we're well on our way. Let's jump back into Scalar. And while I still have that particular rhythm selected, I'm gonna change up the instrument here. I'm gonna come into Staccato Strings. I'm gonna activate that channel and let's listen to what we have with Staccato Strings on that rhythm. So I really like that, but the notes are going quite low for me. So what I'm gonna do to change that or get rid of that is turn on voice grouping. And instead of dynamic, I'm gonna go dynamic plus one octave. And that's perfect. So to get that, I'm gonna just go ahead and take the audio because those staccato strings built into scalar sound absolutely phenomenal to begin with. And now that I have that audio channel, I'm gonna do the same thing we did before, which is come in from Scalar, turn it to in, record, and then just record those. Great. And again, set that to auto, and now I have that audio bounce to a file. So what about a melody now? Instead of expressions, let's use an arpeggio. And let's just use the up on an eighth note and see what it sounds like when compared to what we have. I mean, that sounds absolutely phenomenal right out of the gate. So what I'm gonna do here, clear my MIDI, hit capture MIDI, and go ahead and play that. Stop that MIDI, and then I'm gonna drag that onto my piano section. And if I come in here now, let's go ahead and close down Scalar for a second. I'm gonna double click that, and I already have a bunch of information in the lower frequencies of this track, so what I'm gonna do here is only keep that higher frequency content for this piano. Boom, 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 and let's listen to it. And in fact, let me go ahead and just turn off Scalar for a second, just so we can hear the actual audio that we have outside. I mean, that sounds really, really good. And if we wanted to, we could go one step further with a little bit more melody or a counter melody or some accompaniment, whatever you wanna call it. If I pull up Scalar again, what I wanna do this time is instead of an eighth, I'm gonna go up to a quarter and let's see what that sounds like with those staccato strings in conjunction with the rest of what we have already. I mean, I think that's a pretty good start for what? That was probably 10 minutes and we're well on our way to creating something. We have full flexibility now. Obviously I've bounced some things to audio here, but you don't need to do that. You can always have multiple instances of Scalar. You can keep the MIDI. You can do whatever you want so it's non-destructive. It's, it's non-linear. And that's one of the most beautiful things about Scalar is that you don't need to bounce audio. I'm doing it here to save time and just show you how to get certain things done. We're well on our way, right? Boom. So there you go. That's getting started creating an entire track using the power of Scalar 2. So if you have it, there's some information for you. If you don't have it, go ahead and check it out. Links in the video description as usual. I'm Joshua Casper. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.